Hey there, mamas. Welcome back to the very end of cloth diaper sewing month. I think I only have two more videos to go after this one. So then we'll have to start into something new. Um, for today's video, I'm going to do sort of a G diaper style all in two. Could also just be a fleece cover. I'm just gonna be using pull for the inner because I don't have any nylon, but if you don't have the access to pull and you have, you have fleece and you have nylon, then these tabs can be made with nylon and this inner pocket can be made with nylon. The fleece will do most of the job at the waterproofing and the inner is more just to be sort of a container and wipeable and at least a little bit waterproof. And nylon is that. And before people used pull, people used nylon in cloth diaper shells. So it, it does help. It's kind of similar to fleece. It's not as good, but it will work. I'm using suede cloth for my little tabs and it's really thick. You don't have to use a Microtex or a ballpoint needle with these either. Um, the only type, the only place the pull is going to be sewn is through the edges. And I'm going to be using fold over elastic with that. So if you only had a universal needle, you would still want to use polyester thread, but you could use a universal needle. You could use fold over elastic or micro fleece or elastic for your edges. And you could use nylon. Um, so you wouldn't really need specific diapering supplies for a lot of this. I'm not sure of the fit of this yet because I don't have any babies to try it on. I used one of my sized diaper templates. I added a little bit to the outer width of the crotch and I did two inch wide, two and a half inch wide strips for the leg and for the gathering for the micro fleece at the leg. And I used four and a half or five inch wide for the waist. Um, they don't have to be that wide. I'm just doing it similar to how I do a soaker, how I do the, the fleece soakers. Um, I just kind of reshaped it. Instead of it going out to the panel, I rounded it up because I looked at photos of G-diapers and they just have kind of a general body that's kind of wide through the middle. And then they have the cuffed leg, the stretchy cuffed leg, and then they have the top cuff, which becomes a waistband and Velcros around, and Velcros around the back. So the front, once it has the waistband on, wraps around and Velcros to the back, which is sort of interesting. You could do it either the back or the front. For these tabs, I just cut two inch wide, little, and be one and a half inch wide even, I'm not sure, little strips, little rectangles, and I ironed them and folded them in. If you're using nylon, it'll be a lot thinner and easier to use. These are gonna be what sews onto the shell and holds in the, the little insert pocket, and there's just gonna be a snap on the edge of each one after we finish sewing them in. And I sewed these other seven already, and then it's just a straight stitch around the outside just to hold it together and then the snap will go through after it's all sewn. The first thing we're gonna do is our little fleece shell. And I'm completely improvising on this because I've never made anything like this before. But you know, I looked at some photos. I think we can figure it out. The way you're gonna sew this is just like how you sew your fleece covers. You're gonna serge on or, or zigzag stitch on your trim you know, outer faces toward each other. I'm gonna leave a little bit of excess at the top and I'm not gonna stretch it until it gets to this part through the middle. So this top part's gonna not be stretchy, not pulled out. And then when I get to about like that two inches down point, then I'm gonna stretch it through the leg and then I'm gonna relax it again when I get to the top. And this piece on the side is gonna go all the way through. So you can see how the stretching through the crotch has gathered it up, made a nice little cuff there, and how it's really only tight down here by the legs, but up here I've made it, you know, I've left it loose. And then just using the top, you know, you can tighten it just then via the waist. So I left both, both top at the front and the back loose. If you're not getting a good leg fit, and if your baby has skinny legs, you can tighten it all the way through. And this one that I'm doing here is a small size. You could probably do an extra small too, but then I would definitely really work on getting those leg holes tight. You might want to use real elastic. Like you could use this as a casing and you could thread elastic through that to tighten up the legs even more. So 
So now we've got our little legs gathered on our pants. Nice little sort of gusset through the middle there, makes more of a shape. I've doubled up the fleece here in the middle, just like I do with my fleece soakers, but it's probably not necessary if you're using pull on the inside. If you're using nylon, you might want to just have a little more, you know, wet zone protection. But again, it's not going to be anything directly against the baby. There'll be some, some layers. One layer is probably enough. I just did this more for shape and sort of structure. So now we've got our legs done and we're going to do our waist. For the waist, because it has this kind of extended front tab, I was trying to think of a way to do that. And I think that what I will do is sort of leave the end unsurged, both, you know, when I get to this point here, I'm just gonna stop, and then I'm gonna sew beyond that. So, so you could use a zigzag stitch and then stop and take it off and then do some final work. So now you've got it surged or zigzagged through the middle to keep that sort of stretchiness a little bit gathered there at the front. We're going to do the same thing across the back. For the back, we're going to go all the way to the end. When you're doing the back, you want to leave about, you know, three quarters of an inch to an inch extra at the end because we are going to be folding that over to finish off that edge when we're all done. So just leave a little bit beyond the end. And so here on the back, you can see where they line up. And you can just take this and you can just either either tuck in that edge there or even trim out the underside piece. And then we're just gonna be folding that over to make it a little thicker at the back. Nice fold. I think cutting out a little bit is probably a really easy way, especially since micro fleece is no fray, to make it a little easier to fold over. So I would just cut out not a full half, but just a little bit out of the back there. And then you can fold this part up just a tad, just a tad, and then sort of fold it over. So I'm just gonna clip that in place and do the other sides. And then we'll do them all together on the sewing machine. So the back's all prepped for sewing. And now we can do the front. So for the front, since the way that they have it is with these little, you know, wrap around tabs from the front, I would probably decide how much you want to wrap around, potentially, and trim it down just a little bit so they're even. I've left mine really long since I didn't know how long exactly it needed to be just to make sure I had enough. So here at the back where we haven't finished sewing through, we're going to be just sort of tucking the sides in like a binding and then sewing it over this edge here and then at the end to finish off that kind of wing tab we're going to be folding in the end to have more of a finished edge g diapers has their hook part of their hook and loop set fully on the inside of that so we're just going to sew these wings closed first and then sew on our hook tab, kind of line it all up, both sides. Make sure that it's even. And so now you just do the same thing to the other side. And now you're just gonna sew under the edges at the, at the back as well. You just clean up that nice little edge there. And I think the G Diapers puts their size tags in there maybe. I wonder if I have any old size tags. So 
So I've got the edge of the back folded under here and I'm just gonna set my size tag right into that. You could probably sew like a full rectangle there so that the edge isn't stretched up, but I don't think it really matters. And then the next thing we're gonna do is gonna be sewing on our hook and loop. I love that little tag right there, it's so cute. You know, after feeling this, I really think that elastic down the legs, like have that be a casing, is a really good idea. If I was gonna do that before I sewed over the top here, I would feed the elastic through and then pull it to the right tension. And then when sewing this on, it would sew the elastic on as well. So you could sew one side, have the elastic in, and then the side that's folded over here, you could pull the top of the bodkin out through the top here before you finish this part off and then stretch it and then pull it to the other side. And then when you're closing this part off here, you could sew your elastic off. What a neat idea. I hadn't even thought about that. Well, so, you know, close enough. <laughs> now for the back, we're gonna take the back side, which is the wider side, but it doesn't have the tabs. And we're gonna set our loop strip right down in there. Kind of evenly place it between the two ends there. And this is obviously gonna stop the back from being stretchy because it's not stretchy. But you wanna probably have it you know, be fairly, fairly flattened out before you sew it. And so there's your back loop strip. And then for the front wing tabs, just gonna straighten it out and do your hook at the end here. And then you're just gonna do your, your laundry tab just right inside there just where it flattens out. The laundry tab is gonna be sewn over one of the snap strips to hold the back on. So we're just gonna insert it in there and you can pin it down if you want. Then there's your little front tabs and the back has the loop and the tag. Now I'm gonna sew in my back snap tabs and I'm just gonna sew them in right underneath this seam here. So I'm gonna take them and put them against the side and then fold that down and just sew them. You could even open it up like this and then just sew them right to that surged edge, or if you have zigzag stitch, that zigzagged edge there. And I suppose if you wanted to have the option of using this as just a plain fleece cover, you would probably put the sockets on this side and then the studs on the other side. So I'll do it that way. And 
And so there's your shell. I would say that if you were gonna do an extra small or a newborn size, you would definitely wanna add elastic inside that edge there. But for the larger sizes, it's probably not necessary as long as there's enough absorbency inside. And the way that it closes is wrapping around the back instead of the front. And next we're gonna be making the little pouch to hold the insert. So now we're gonna be doing the little pouch to hold the insert. You'll wanna take either whatever insert you plan on using or approximately the size of the middle of your cover here, like where you have the reinforced part, and that'll be the width of your insert, but then it can be, you know, it can be thicker. And so you've gotta kind of account for the idea that it'll be, it'll be thicker than its width. And we're gonna be using fold over elastic to sort of gather in the outsides to make a pouch. And we're also going to be putting tabs on each of the corners. So at this point, you can sew the tabs in first to your pull. So they're in the right place before you sew the pull on. It'll probably make it easier for you to not lose them. And the next thing you're going to be doing is just taking your fold over elastic or if you don't have fold over elastic and you want to, you know, make a cased edge, you could also use like fleece and then thread a casing or you could just fold it in and make a casing either direction. But I'm just going to be using fold over elastic. Probably going to start it just next to that on one side, but it doesn't matter where you start and where you stop. You could also put a size tag on the pouch if you have different size pouches for different size diapers. Like I know, I think that G Diapers has two different sizes of pouches, but I'm not sure. Again, I don't know G Diapers, so. And this is gonna kind of just have a moderate stretch all the way around. I'm gonna set it to my three step zigzag. and fairly wide. So now you've got this little pouch and you can make a little rectangular or slightly contoured soaker to fit into it or you can use an existing rectangular or contoured soaker. This is for a small size but if you were using a large size it would be you know a longer wider rectangle depending on the size of your case and now we're going to add the snaps to it. I mean, it sure looks like a G-diaper. Not exactly sure if it'll fit like one, or if it needs to be tighter maybe at this middle part of the leg elastic, but it looks pretty similar. I think that once it's on and being stretched out, it would hold. If it's wrapped around and if it's stuffed enough, but you might want to make it a little tighter right here in the middle, like pull it all the way tight right at that very middle spot. Other than that, I think it looks pretty similar. Again, not a diaper I've ever used. I think theirs might be wider on their shell. I think their shell is more rectangular shaped. So I'll work up a pattern for this over the next few days and I'll post it up sometime in February and then I'll add it to the link in this video. But if you wanna just try working on it on your own, you, if, or if you have a G diaper shell that you can trace to get that sh general shape to get the white, I think it's wider through the legs. But if you want to, if you want to go and trace one and then you know just assemble it this way, that'd probably work. It's definitely something interesting to try. This is kind of my prototype. 
but I don't have a baby to try it on, so... It looks interesting, though. I can- I can see how it would work. And you could also just use this shell since it's fleece. I know theirs isn't. And for this one, you could literally just trifold a prefold and set it right into this- this shell. It wouldn't even need this part in the middle here if it's enough absorbency, but this would just kind of hold in extra, you know, if it needed more. It seems to span the right distance, though. So there's your G diaper style all in two shell. You would just trifold, prefold, or lay in inserts that can be against the baby's skin inside that little pouch there. You could make a few of the pouches, like, you know, two pouches for every cover maybe, or two or three pouches for every cover. You could also just use the cover by itself since it's made out of fleece. And since I've put this double area in the wet zone, it might be pretty useful as just a cover by itself. Um, anyway, try it out. See if you come up with a better idea. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear if it works or what you found worked. Use some fleece that you don't care about. You know, maybe use nylon instead of pull at first. I'd love to, I'd love to hear what works for other people. G-diaper style, all in two shell. Happy sewing. <laughs>